and hello YouTube, welcome. Uh, today, I'm not going to do an engineering video as I do my usual open form or petroleum videos. Now, uh, I just want to talk about a very controversial topic on whether microwaving food is really bad for you. And let's take a look at the reasons why. Um, and of course, um, having heard so much, uh, so much uh, buzz of this going around, I decided to make a video with some literature review. Means this means I'll look at actual scientific articles to ascertain whether, you know, it's true or false that these these uh, microwaves are really really bad. So I'm gonna take a look at a typical article saying why microwaves are bad, and this is by uh, looks like a Lizette Borelli. I don't know if I pronounced the name the name right, but let's take a look at the let's take a look at the points that are made. Now number one, it says microwaves can zap. Uh, food nutrition. So it says that microwaving uh, causes the nutritional value of food to drop due to this dielectric heating of microwaves. So, okay, so it, microwaving causes water molecules to rotate rapidly in the microwave and uh, in the food in high frequencies, which create molecular friction and heats up your food. That's right, to some extent. Because it called microwaves, uh, you know, there's something of resonant frequency. It has the same resonant frequency as a water OH bond, uh, and this causes the molecular structure in your food to change. Hmm. So this, this, this one, I want to hold your thing first. Okay. So let's take a look at the evidence. So first thing first, it says microwaves destroy breast milk and vitamin B12. Um. It says that the health benefits of vitamin B12 are instantly negated once in a microwave. In a study uh, uh, by this Journal of Agriculture and Food Chemistry, it says that the heating effects of microwave heating uh, kind of destroys the vitamin B12 value in foods like raw beef, pork, and milk. Now, I actually went to go and check out uh, the study, and this is the actual paper that is being uh, Given so, so it says to clarify the effects of microwave heating on B12 food, uh, vitamin B12 in foods like raw beef, pork, and milk were treated by microwave heating. Appreciable loss, appro approximately thirty to forty percent, occurred in the food during microwave heating due to the degradation of vitamin B12 by microwave heating. So uh, let me stop here for a moment. Is it only by microwave heating that this vitamin B12 is destroyed? So uh, is it only microwaves that do this kind of effect? Well, the answer is no. Well, even in things like braising, see, braising in different cuts of pork. Let me zoom in for you. This is another scientific paper. Uh, and after that, I'll zoom up. But let me cite this first. Braising in different cuts of pork, loin, leg, rib, uh, rib and separate meat destroys pantheonic, pantothianic acid, pyridoxine, and vitamin B12. 10 to 30 percent respectively so if braising is in that temp it's a uh, temperature yeah it will cause if it's a high enough temperature it will cause all these vitamins to be lost it's not just microwaving that does it even you do something like frying frying food saute it will cause it to be lost if the temperature is high enough so microwaves are not completely to blame any form of high temperature cooking will get it destroyed so that's the same for canned meats and so well, your solution is very simple. Don't just heat the meats directly. Heat it in a pot of water, and you you drop the meats in a pot of water. Then the temperatures won't get excessively high. Once they don't get excessively high, um, your nutrient loss will be a lot less. Now, braising, braising, of course, is a high temperature process. So, in fact, any any form of cooking, if you've got frying or what, it will destroy all this nutritional value as well. It's not just microwaving, and this this paper is called. Effects of food processing on the thermodynamic and nutritive value of foods, a literature and database survey. All right, and it's done by this uh, Department of Molecular and Bio, uh, Biochemistry and Molecular Biology School of Medicine, Wright State University, Dayton, Ohio, USA. So, all right, that's the first point I want to bring across. So in terms of zapping nutrients, there is a way uh, uh, that you can cook in the microwave without getting the value of the nutrients out and it's simply by boiling food or you can just heat a pot of uh, soup in the microwave and that will be okay 
and it just depends on the temperature of the cooking. If you want to fry something in a microwave, uh, where you know things get so hot that they start to brown, then definitely uh, you will have this kind of uh, nutrition losses. So it's not just the microwave itself that does it. It is the can be braising, it can be frying that will cause this as well. So uh, let's take up take a look at this other point. It says that powerful bacterial fighting agents in breast milk are also destroyed by microwave heating. So blah blah blah. Researchers tested nearly 22, 22 freshly frozen milk samples. Tested them for lysosome activity. This is a antibody. This is something that you know uh, will lysozyme. This I, I think it's an enzyme that destroys uh or that's in the lysosome. It's in a white blood cell. Okay. Let me let me double check what lyso. Oh yes, yes. This is uh, something in the cell that it kinds of it destroys. Uh, for example, uh, the white blood cell or phagocyte will gobble up a back a piece of bacteria, and this lysosome will kind of dissolve the bacteria. So that's in cell biology. Okay. So it uh to test them for lysosome activity and antibodies by heating samples thirty seconds in the microwave and either low or high setting, breast milk microwave at high temperatures were found to have greater E. coli growth than unmicrowave breast milk. So yeah, basically uh, if you let if you let the things cool enough, cool off enough, um, yeah, bacteria will start to grow back just like any any other you know kind of food, right? So if you if you heat uh if you heat a microwave food and you should eat it while it's hot, right? So uh, if not the bacteria will start growing back. I mean, natural breast milk, yes, if you leave it out there, you, the bacteria will go slower because antibodies are inside. So let's, let's draw a graph. And I'll show you what this thing actually is. Okay, so I don't want this uh, bing. All right. Okay. Let's give us some uh, some graph here. So you have a you have a breast milk. Uh, let's say let's say a microwave and not microwave, right? So let's say a non microwave breast milk will have a bacterial population. And then you have a time, right? So this black line represents non-microwave breast milk. So if you have breast milk that was microwave, it, the bacterial population would dip when you microwave it because it's you kind of like heat the milk up and obviously you kill a lot of the bacteria. But once it cools down and starts to, uh, uh, yeah, the bacteria that's inside you can start to multiply, it will go up way higher, right? So you want to, if you want to microwave food, okay. So this this part is when it's microwave, right? This part is when you microwave your food, and this part is when it starts to cool down. Then bacteria starts to grow again. So the red line represents a uh, microwave breast milk. So you want to eat, you want to drink the milk while it's here. You don't want to drink the milk while it's here. If not, you got to microwave it again. So that's that's all the article is saying, right? That's that's all. I mean, it's not dangerous. You just gotta drink it while it's hot. That's a simple common sense, okay? Okay, microwaving at low temperatures also decreased lysozyme activity and pro promoted the growth of harmful bacteria for babies. So, same idea. If you microwave at, sorry, if you microwave at low temperatures, yeah, you microwave at low temperatures, uh, you better drink your milk straight away. You don't you don't drink your milk after leaving it outside because bacteria will grow. So it's not the microwave's fault, uh, per se. It's just gotta drink it when it's hot. Okay, that's all. That's all you gotta do. You gotta know what you're doing. All right. So um, I'm gonna paste these articles in the, the description box. Okay. So next thing says that when head foods are wrapped in plastic in microwave, you can create carcinogens in food. So okay, let me ask you something. Uh, if you want to fry food, will you put plastic in the pan? Obviously not. So, um, if you don't want to uh, fry food with plastic in the pan, you obviously don't want to microwave uh, food with plastic unless you put like water. If you put water, then the the temperature will be limited to about a hundred degrees C, 
100 degrees C may not be high enough for these uh, carcinogens to form. You need uh, something more than 100 degrees C where things start to fry and stuff. Maybe then you will have a very much greater rate of carcinogen formation. So, so yeah, this one's based on the Russian and German studies. Uh, the assembling of microwavable foods found to contain toxic chemicals such as BPA, benzene toluene, and xylene. Alright, so basically, don't put uh, things in plastic containers. Unless, of course, you are using these plastic containers to boil the food. It's the same idea. If you have high temperature hot spots, you don't want to put it with a plastic. And if you fry food, don't put plastic inside your, your frying pan. Doesn't make sense at all, right? So whatever you don't put in a frying pan, don't put in a microwave. Simple as that, okay? And let's see, microwave can change the uh, makeup of food, all right? And change your heart rate. This one, this one, the last one is obviously don't, don't expose yourself to microwaves. That's common sense. Uh, so um, let's see this one. In a Swiss clinical study, researchers found that blood changes in individuals who consume microwave milk and vegetables. In the eight participants in the study, ate a series of food prepared in different ways, including food heated in the microwave. So, hold on, before I go on to the good articles, let's take a look at the study then. So this is the study. Oh, I believe it's uh, this article I've already opened up. All right, so um, this was some of the information that's kind of repeated before. Uh, again, you don't heat your microwave with plastics, unless, of course, you're trying to boil something. If you're boiling something, then that's fine. Uh, that, that's why you tend to want to add a bit of water. In fact, the more water, the better. It's safer. Uh, so that the boiling of water will keep the temperature at a constant rate. Or it kind of uh, moderates the temperature because as it's boiling, it, it cools down. Uh, it cools down the container so that it doesn't get excessively hot. So put some water in. Yeah. And um, let's take a look. What is this article saying? Uh, so this is an article quoting another article, which is okay, great. Not that, I'd rather you quote a scientific paper, but anyway, just my, that's my preference. But anyway, uh, that's a very high standard. Can't always hold articles to that, so that's okay. Um, okay, let's take a look. New study confirms microwaves affect your heart. It's common sense. Don't expose yourself. Uh, microwave radiation leakage. No, no, no. Where's the nutrition value? Okay. So I think this is the one. It says research shows that a microwave will not help you in the efforts to so-called uh, maximize this bang for your buck. Okay. And in fact, will threaten your health by violently ripping apart, ripping molecules in your food apart, rendering, rendering some nutrients in it and carcinogenic at best and carcinogenic at worst. So again, these are actually generated by hotspots. So what, how hot are these hot spots? It's the same as barbecuing or frying, honestly. So if you're directly exposing it to fire such that it gets charred, um, that's what microwaving does if you don't manage the temperature. If you want to manage the temperature, put water in and it'll start boiling. That's okay. If it's just if it's putting it with water, it's safe. Otherwise, just assume that you're frying the food in the microwave. Okay? Um, yeah. I don't see what it's trying to say. Eight participants. Let's try number eight. Okay. Ah, this is done by Dr. Hertel. Some fairly compelling evidence support the effects of destructive microwaves come from a highly uh, cited study by a Swiss food scientist named Dr. Uh, Hans Hertel. Um, okay, in a small study co-authored by Dr. Bla uh, Bernard Blanc of the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology and the Univers University Institute for Biochemistry, they revealed the degenerative forces produced by microwave ovens on the foods that they cook. Dr. Hertel concluded that the microwave cooking in these nutrients uh, changed the 
uh, nutrients in the food and that the changes took place in the blood that could cause negative health effects. All right, that's uh, okay. Let's take a look. Hartel's conclusions were in the microwave uh, food that resulted in higher cholesterol levels, decreased numbers of leukocytes, white blood cells, which can suggest poisoning, decreased number of red blood cells, production, production of radiolytic compounds. This one I want to see because radiolysis, radiolysis only occurs in the presence of ionizing radiation. So um, there is no ionizing radiation in microwaves. The wavelengths are way too long. Okay. So electromagnetic spectrum. Okay. So let this is the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay. Hmm. From radio to space.com. Never mind. I'll just leave it in the Google. You can see this this picture here from GSB Humboldt.edu. Gamma rays are on the left, radio waves and microwaves are on the right. Okay, so this is what the electromagnetic spectrum all looks like. And visible light is also a form of electromagnetic radiation. So do, please, please, please do not get afraid of the word radiation. Even visible light is radiation, okay, uh, in, in the scientific sense. So microwave and radio waves uh, are on the right. These are lower energy uh, electromagnetic waves. And they do not, they do not, they do not ionize uh, uh, they do not ionize uh, food at low temperatures. So if if uh, you want radiolysis to happen, you usually need a high energy uh, electromagnetic wave like ultraviolet, X-rays, and gamma rays. Nevertheless, let's take a look and see whether this paper is on uh, on on uh, online, and we'll take a look at what how how they come at that uh, that conclusion. All right. Decrease hemoglobin levels, which could indicate anemia. All right. Uh, gag order was done. Uh, let's see. He published the results of Hertel studies in the search for health of spring. Let's take a look at this one. So this is a story. All right. Okay, so microwaves heat food by causing molecules to vibrate at 2.5 billion times per second or 2.5 gigahertz, right? 2.5 gigahertz. Okay, while microwaves can rapidly heat a dish, it also alters a food's chemical structure. Now, this requires energy. If it's if you're cooking a microwave as if you're using it as a fryer, then of course, if it's a boiler, then it's, the effect is not as much if you, if you put water. Structure of water molecules are torn apart and forcefully deport. Um, that implies that uh, there's ionization that happens. Uh, that re usually requires a lot, a lot of energy. By and large, it's not always the case. It's just vibration. Okay. Microwaves usually do not have enough energy to do this. Unless you are forming a hotspot, then that's a different story. Okay, let's take a look. Let's see. Okay, let, maybe let's go Google Scholar. Look for Dr. Herto. Herto microwave. All right. Blank and Herto. Okay, it's over here, but there's no, there's no, um, well, there is no uh, link. I can't click anything here. Let's take a look at this then. See whether there's any other. Yeah, I can't find it online. Oh well, uh, it's a bit hard to find that. Uh, it would be it would have been good to see the actual study and how these uh, these conclusions were found. All right. Let's see. Well, let me fast forward the search. 
All right, never mind. Let's just take a look at the... I uh, could not find anything yet. If you have something, please post it in the link. Maybe I can go and look at uh, where the actual article was. And not a, not a article, not a journal art, not a internet article, but a journal article. That is by a, that is by a peer review paper. Then we can see what the actual facts are. All right. Uh, so this this uh, anyway. So we look at the other side also. I mean, we, we can address the the uh, we can address the. Um, we can address these uh, carcinogenic productions of uh, where is it? Yeah, carcinogenic free radicals are produced in microwaved plants, especially root vegetables. Okay, we want to look at this uh, probably in the next video, um, cause it's gonna take long to go and do a little bit more research. So I'm gonna stop this for now. Um, I'm gonna go into the next research then see, uh, next video and see we're gonna see more articles and check out some of the facts in the scientific literature. Thanks for watching.